want to hear your ideas. Uh -huh. and we all then let's begin. Then let's begin. Let's 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 go to our ideas. Our ideas. Who is holding this meeting? Not us. And she'll let you talk. Give her a chance. You should have to listen. Take the only last. China owns 29% of our foreign debt. That is a real concern to me. Like I said, I'm on the Armed Services Committee, and I've got to sit in a lot of hearings. And I can tell you, I don't know what China's doing, but it's concerning. They are building 14 sorry, sir. submarines right now. They're building one. They have been devoting over 12% of their budget to national defense. Um, they just introduced their version of a stealth aircraft fighter plane recently, and they just unveiled a 1,200-mile aircraft carrier busting bomb. So it's a little concerning that they hold this much of our debt. In fact, with the interest that we pay China, we would be able to buy three, or they could buy three joint strike fighters and still have $50 million left over. So um, there's a lot of reasons, I think, that we need to get out of debt, but certainly this obligation of China is a concern. In fact, Adam Mike Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he just went off, I should say, uh, but he, last summer at this time, he said, I think the biggest threat we have to our national security is the national debt. And you think about it, that's, that's a pretty important statement. So there's several reasons that we need to get control of this huge debt crisis. One, it's already talked but also, I think it hurts our national security. Okay, how many would agree with this statement? We have a debt crisis because Washington spends too much, not because Washington taxes too low. Raise your hand if you agree with that. Okay. It's both. Um, hey, there's, there's people in the room that disagree. Uh, who disagrees with that? Yeah. There are people yeah. who disagree yeah. with that statement. Yeah. 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 You've got to be fair if you're going to be fair. No, no, no. You didn't ask that question, Representative Hart, sir. I don't know. You didn't ask that question, sir. I've got a right to speak. And you've got a right to shut up. Yeah, we are. Two people. So let's get along here, all right? Okay. Now, here's a, a slide that kind of shows the tax revenue since 1947. That's in the green. It's historically about 18% of GDP. And you see the spending that's been going on. This is this year. But projected, if we don't make some changes, is expected to go off the charts. So that is what is concerning. In order to keep pace to balance the budget, we would have to raise taxes on everybody 60%. And even if you taxed all the millionaires of billionaires that you hear about in the news, everybody likes to pick on, nobody's a millionaire pick on. Oh. Um, that would not balance the Poor budget. Poor babies. That far out of whack we are. We can, you know, take all the money. So we definitely have a spending uh, problem. Just so you know, because there's a lot of uh, class warfare going on, a lot of rhetoric, the top 10%, whether you know, like them or not, thinks they ought to be taxed more. Just so you know, uh, they right now pay 70% of all the taxes that come into the country. So, you know, whatever we do. There's one I brought. No, 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 of the total amount of money that comes in uh, tax revenue, 70% of it comes from them. So, but anyway, we're not going to get into whether it's going to be. You're saying okay. bad, though. Federal, let's move on to federal uh, debt limit. We just had a big discussion on that. $14.3 trillion less debt than we have. Uh, here's the history. You see it's gone up and up, you know, for a long time. Uh, Congress put a limit on the amount of borrowing the country could do. And then over the years, obviously, the more programs that are uh, approved, the more it costs, then eventually you run up to, we got to go borrow some more money. So that's what happened just 
possibility of downgrading it. Uh, so what Congress knew, they made it clear to us that unless you guys make some real permanent structural changes, we're going to downgrade you. And then, last week, the final version passed, and it didn't go far enough. Standards and Poor's had said, you've got to cut $4 trillion at least. You need to put some uh, permanent reforms What, what, what about there. the increasing taxes? We hadn't done that. You want to pay more taxes? Yes, yes. Anyway, I do. I, why do you not increase tax? You want to pay more tax? Yes, I do. Well, then, well, I, do. I, do. I, I, do. I do think that people should be taxed, particularly people who are making a lot more money than middle class. You guys are putting the middle class people completely out of the Wait, we get to question the answer session. You'll get the first question. I'll answer Thank that, you. Sam. Thank you. Anyway, it didn't go far enough, and they said that, and so, you know, we had a downgrade situation. That's why I voted no on the final version of it. Let me give you a little history of that. The president came, first of all, this spring and says, I want you, Congress, to approve raising the debt ceiling clean, without any spending cuts, without anything. Overwhelmingly, a bipartisan uh, group in the House, Republicans and Democrats, said, no, that's irresponsible. We can't just keep kicking the can down the road, borrowing more money from China. So that failed. And then we started talking. 